Good evening, good evening. So we're just about to start. It's seven o'clock on the dot, and um, <laughs> I was just getting ready for you guys. All right, so I'm just going to give everyone a few more minutes to log in. I see some people are already have already started logging in, which is awesome. So while they log in, I will go into the presentation and then just have it all up on the screen for others that are joining us. Alrighty, 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 there's people coming through. Wonderful. This is good, good stuff. This is good, good stuff. All right, so we'll just give everybody just another minute or so. Righty. The early birds catch the first worm. Or is it the worm or just the first worm? Okay. I'll just give everybody a minute or two if you can just bear with me. I should have some music, hey? I should have had music. I didn't even think about that. All right, let me just get some water. Cool, more people are coming in. That is great stuff. That is really good. See if we can just give everybody else another minute or so. Then we'll just get straight into what we are here for this evening. I'm looking forward to this evening. I was put on the spot, in fact, yesterday uh, while we were having a discussion. So let me just share with some of you that, that may not know. So while we were having a discussion, I was put on the spot and I was, and there was a request that uh, came from somebody and, and uh, they said, could you <clears throat> try and condense or share with us as much as you can in a webinar of what you teach over the weekend. And because I'd thought about it before and others had requested, pardon, requested this before, I thought, well, I'm, I'm gonna give it a go. And um, yeah, so here we are. There's more people that are logging in. Hi to those that have just logged in. I was just sharing now, uh, why we actually here this evening on such short notice. So I want to thank you for everyone that has Lloyd, uh, had, that has logged in so far. <laughs> Lloyd, your name just popped up. <laughs> Lloyd, how are you doing this evening? I trust you good. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Cool, let's see. I'm just going to give others another minute or so. Usually the first few minutes of a webinar, people take their time or they some technicality happens or something of the of the sort you know happens so i like just to give that few minutes to everybody this okay let's see somebody said hey <laughs> wonderful <laughs> hey lloyd hey lloyd great stuff so we're glad that you here Okay, there's more people logging in. Yippee, yippee, yippee. So Monday didn't scare too many people away, hey? <laughs> that is great, great, great stuff. Great stuff. Cool. I think five past seven, then we're just going to go into it so that we can get through the bulk of the information that you can either make your decision on whether the one-day training or we're the coaching and that's really what this evening is about because I've gotten so many questions so yesterday when I was um, asked that question could you try and condense and give us some some lessons in the webinar oh, look I rose to the occasion because I saw the benefit for both the parties that were asking and for myself as well because then at least I get to sharing a lot more um, about what FHC consulting is all about. Wonderful, more participants are coming through. I'm not going to start naming too many names. Oh, but I see Anisa's just logged in. Anisa, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome this evening. 
So we were just giving everybody um, a few minutes. It is five past seven. I like to be on time. So I'm going to get stuck right into it. And whoever continues to come in, they will come in um, as we go along. So again, a very good evening to everybody. Those that I was just chatting to before others have popped in. It's now five past seven. I'm, I'm happy that you are here this evening. I'm thankful that we could get together. We can have this quick chat. Um, you know, the basis of this evening, like I was just sharing, I know I shared it a few times in this few minutes. It was just really to, to get everybody on the same page. It was that there's a lot of people that have been asking me, so Genevieve, why real estate? Why have you all of a sudden decided that you're going to put a one day property workshop together because you've been doing property coaching? So what's the difference? Others have been asking me, so you've been doing property coaching. Did you decide to go into training? I'm like, no, FHC Consulting is a training and coaching company. We may not have started with property on the cards, but it was something that we knew somewhere along the line we may go down. So ladies and gents that are here, I would like to welcome you again this evening. And I'd like to say, being this a webinar, there's a Q&A box. If you've got any questions, just now, just now Lloyd said hi to all the panelists. Um, it's me and some of the team that will be helping me, just in case there's anything technical that goes on. Um, if there's any questions that you have during this webinar, please feel free to pop it in the Q&A box. In the Q&A box, it will come directly to me. And as I go along, I'll see where that's appropriate to answer at that time or at a later stage. Wonderful stuff. See, as we are talking, more people have come. So this evening is really just about how to find a property opportunity. I run a one-day property workshop from my Sunning Hill campus. And from the Sunning Hill campus, my choice is that I will have no more than 12 people in my room so that everybody gets the attention and focus that they need. So I want to share this evening what we will go through. We will go through... Um, about FHC consulting and the collaborations, how to find a property opportunity, running numbers for a property opportunity, and just really the way forward. As with every other webinar, there's a lot of introductions that we do give and we do share of ourselves quite personally. So everybody, this is my family. On the top, my left and probably your right hand side, this was our first official family photo of the four of us. Um, that's one of my biggest reasons for why I do what I do. Um, I've uh, had miscarriages before and she, Hope, my, you know, my daughter had been born and by the name given Hope, clearly she was a hope for us. And we took a family picture and this was her at four, five days old. She had major surgery when she was all of three days old. This is who I call Mr. Property here in the middle. That's TJ, my husband. TJ is also busy in his side of property. As many of you know, TJ is a property investor. Um, for those that are here this evening, let's give that Q&A box just a quick run. Do you know TJ or do you perhaps know M5 Property Addicts? Drop your answer in the Q&A box just so that we can have an interactive evening this evening um, while there's still another two or three people that have just logged in at the moment. Does anybody remember TJ and um, interacting with him or M5 Property Addicts? Cool. Yes, I see comments coming through on the Q&A box. Cool. So yes, there's a lot of people that know TJ as well. So to those of you that may not have known, this is my person and we are both in property. I like that everyone, yes, know him very well. Yes, I know TJ, I know M5 Property Addicts, wonderful stuff. So we in good company, guys. Thank you so much for that. On the top here was just a celebratory picture as I was just sharing about my family. But the reason I chose all these pictures here is to share with you something that you may 
um, have chosen real estate for. So our other why is family, obviously. The picture at the bottom where we're all pulling faces and the picture here in the corner where my daughter's got her hand, something like that. That was our first paid vacation with property money. So the passive income throughout the year paid for that holiday. We were one week in Kruger National Park. We came home. We literally washed up. We did everything that we needed to do in 24 hours. Then we left for Cape Town for the next two to three weeks. And we literally had a holiday from the 15th of December through to the 10th or so it was of January, all funded by property money. Do you like the sound of that? Is that something that you also want to aim for? So in the Q&A box, if that's also something that you'd like to aim for, drop that to me in the Q&A box and... Uh, I'd like to see how many real estate or aspiring real estate investors are out there and are wanting to also use um, passive income for funding holidays. Cool. I see. Yes. Booyaka. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. So I see quite a few of you are also on the same path. Wonderful stuff. There's a lot of messages coming through. Yes, 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 yes. Me. Yes. yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate where you're working with me and you're responding with me. I really, really appreciate that one. So yeah, that's just really the family. However, I want to say this. It wasn't all fun and games because this is how we got into property. It was not because we wanted to fund our next holiday. It was at the back of a whole lot of debt. You see, see uh, TJ and I are serial entrepreneurs. We, we've gotten involved in quite a few businesses as a couple and as, uh, you know, on, in our own entities. And over time, from the car rental company through to the diapers through to uh, chicken farming, I know 90% of you guys already know the chicken farming uh, story. So I'm not going to even go into that one. But I'm sure you're giggling right there where you are. So from the, the, the debt of having all of this baggage, that is how we actually got into our journey of property. We were in a 5 million deficit and we needed to make something work for us. And it was property education that worked for us. So it was really lovely to see in our journey over the last almost three years that we've evolved from literally getting our necks out of debt into having a, a, a property fund our holiday. Don't you think that is a good from this side to that? And we're not done with property yet. And again, this is another reason why I've decided there's a lot of uh, people that are out there that are trying it on their own. There's a lot of people that have started the journey and that have gotten stuck. And many people that come to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis for a long time, I used to say, no, I'm not your person. But I realized a lot of people came through my door because they were frustrated. They were just stuck. They felt miserable. They felt like they couldn't get out of the starting block. They felt like every time they tried something, there was something new that they needed to learn. And it was just overall frustration. But the biggest concern, and I want to share with you guys this evening, I understand the concern of finances. I want to put it out there very early in this um, webinar. I understand when finances are just not playing the game with you. You're frustrated, you want to learn, you want to coach, but things are not moving in your favor. If there's anything, I know that a lot of my journey is powered by, it is powered by really understanding the next person that just says, Jen, I need to get going. And again, inspired me because of others that also walk through the door, simply saying I'm frustrated. So if you're frustrated, you want to get off the starting blocks or you've gotten off the starting blocks and you feel stuck, then you are definitely in the right place. Why? Because at the end of the day, this is where we can get to connect and really getting to know each other on. So why did FHC Consulting decide to put in a, a one-day training when everybody else is doing it. 
I'm doing it specifically for the people that I mentioned. I'm doing it specifically that if you want to sit around a, a, a small table and have that engagement, and I'm doing it again, specifically giving a lot more value to these programs, a lot more structure, because I know what it feels like to be so frustrated and thinking, am I ever going to win with that? And the next best thing, well, not next best thing, but it felt like next best thing. There we have property funding a holiday from working out of this 5 million debt to funding a holiday. Do you think I've come far? Um, would you like to make that particular transition? I'd like to hear from you in the Q&A box. Just drop your feeling right now, either telling me you understand it, I'm with, you know, you're with me, or I'm with you, um, or you understand that this is what you're also wanting to. What is it that you're feeling right now with all of the stuff that I have mentioned? And do you also feel that you're in the, in the right place this evening? I really want to hear from you guys. Share with me how you're feeling. I recognize a few names. I don't want to call you all by name. We're not in the classroom, so I'm not going to be naughty. But I can identify your names. And I'm really warmed at the fact that uh, you guys have made it this evening. That shows a whole lot of commitments. Wonderful stuff. Yes, some have said financial freedom. Some are saying, yes, I'd love my holiday paid off. Uh, some are talking about just blasting some consumer debt. Um, so, okay, cool. So some of you feel that you're in the right place. I did. Oh, somebody said, Jen, I didn't realize that at one stage you felt frustrated the way you do. You make it look so easy. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I, I don't mean to make it look so easy, but I reckon that I've come a long way. So um, I'm really thankful for that particular comment. Cool. Guys, let's see. There's somebody that said something in the chat field. Wonderful. I'm in the right place. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you want to retire before the age of 40 passive income. Wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for participating. You are certainly in the right place because at the end of the day, we are here to learn and we are here to grow. And um, let's see how we can accelerate your growth. So one of the things I would like to say is that, you know, when you are surrounded with like-minded people, you find the power of, of moving forward faster. Why do I say that? Well, my, my husband and I, the duo, the duo that we are, we started out in property uh, education. And the bottom corner, you'll find that our property education picture. Our first coach was Lawrence. Uh, but of course, my husband being my husband, not long into property coaching, he found a heritage site. Yes, my husband gone do that. He found a heritage site, Cresta. Um, if anybody knows where the Cresta Mall is, Windsor West, the first house that was built in West, Windsor West, you got it, my husband found it. While other kids are looking for two bed, one bath, other kids are finding historic sites. And at that time, um, even though we worked really, really well with Lawrence, we were moved over to Andrew. So we skip a picture. Andrew is a gentleman on, um, with the sunglasses and he's sitting next to Bruno. Bruno also happens to be in, in our space as well. And we in his space, he's part of our power team. He runs our, a lot of our contracts for him, uh, for, for our household and for M5 Property Addicts because of course my household will represent FHC Consulting and M5 Property Addicts, you know, about these things, about these serial entrepreneurs. And also just a little secret, Bruno is my landlord. That's where I've got my Sunning Hill campus. So I keep good company. But nonetheless, as I was just sharing here, the power of networking with like-minded people, I want to take your attention to the middle picture. The middle picture is Barry. I remember saying to my husband, I'm going to a sales and leadership cause. And it, it seems like what I'm looking for because I don't like selling to people. I want to first connect with people and really understand is what I'm offering what they're looking for? Because I'm not shy to say, sorry, I'm not offering what you're looking for. Maybe we can look for it somewhere else instead of just taking everything. You know, it's like drinking from every cup. One day you may just be poisoned. 
So in the spirits of really wanting to be the best entrepreneur, the best me, the best version of me, I'd gone through to a sales and leadership course and I pulled my dear husband into it. And nonetheless, being surrounded by awesome people, guess what? Not only our property journey, but our sales and leadership journey in entrepreneurship all led to who we call the God, our, the grandfather of property, of real estate. So it all leads to Robert Kiyosaki. Why? Because legacy education is rich dad, poor dad education, and Barry is a direct link to Robert Kiyosaki. And we've had the privilege of being in a very small room with Robert four times over the last year. The biggest the room was, uh, was 5,000 people, and that was once off. The rest of the time was 70 people and less. So we have really, really been blessed. So we take the power of networking with like-minded people to a whole new level. Like when Bruno said, this is, he's leasing out a, a, a piece of his office. Where was I? I was at the right place at the right time. I took action and I said to him, in fact, you've come like uh, you knew that I was busy. I was going to start looking for somewhere to run my one day workshops from. So he's also been a real blessing in my space because at the eight week, um, at the eight week coaching program, he came and he spoke to my guys for one and a half hours. We actually all got caught up with time. The idea was 30 minutes. Let's talk about the OTP from an investor point of view and, 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 and just share with us what do you think we should look out for? One and a half hours later, guys, I kid you not, we were all deep into what Bruno was sharing and the guys were so interactive and were able to take so much from them. So the power of networking is so essential. I know that if I've looked at quite a few of the names on this particular list, my humble apologies, when I look at the names on this list, I see a lot of people that are in sapping. So if you are in Sapin, let's give a hashtag for Sapin in our Q&A box. Say yes, Sapin, or say yes, or say something about Sapin in the Q&A box. Because if some of you may not have been in Sapin, some of us would not have met each other, right? Fantastic, I see. Yes, there's a, there's a lot of interaction about Sapin. Alrighty, hashtag Sapin, awesome stuff. Thank you, thank you. Thanks so much, guys. So really just getting into the agenda, <clears throat> the, you know, one of the things that I've learned is that if I share a lot of me and who I am, people then don't see the finished product, that they see our transition in this process. And just like yourself, my husband and I were where you are, many of you, okay? Some of you, I don't know where you are. You may be ahead of us. We don't know. I don't know. But I know easily identifying so many of the participants here on this uh, webinar this evening, I have been where you are. In fact, I was actually sharing with my husband a couple of weeks ago how frustrated I was because something was just not coming right. And he was just about to give me sourcing advice. And I said, don't take the lesson away from me. Leave that lesson with me. So even still, almost three years into one's journey, the frustrations will come up, but a very different frustration. Why? Because you will meet a very different lesson. However, the trick is push on. Don't sit still, push on. All right. So about FHC Consulting. FHC Consulting is a training and coaching company, as many of you already know. Um, I started my company um, 2017 in March and specifically as a freelancer around IT, because yes, before I left the, the working environment, I was in a software tester. So there was quite a few things that I'd done in terms of getting myself ready to be a trainer and, and, and all the qualifications. So my natural progression was moving into the happy place of training and coaching. Um, I offer my services from a business to business space. So I recognize Anisa's name here earlier. I met Anisa at one of my clients. So having a client that also does training and coaching, those are the sort of clients that I go through to and uh, plug in from a business to business, delivering from the, 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 the subject that I am already good at, the subject that I'm already thriving at. Because of course, you know, when you hire somebody 
for a small space of time or you contract a company out, you obviously want to know that people are coming to speak from experience. So like Anisa and I'd seen, let me go back. Um, I'd gone back to some of the names. There's Anisa, there's Queen, there's Sam. Yes, there's Linda, Lindy Wem, Tinge. So quite a few of you guys, I recognize you from one of my clients. That's what I was doing there. And um, yes, that's business to business clientele. And last but certainly not least, collaboration with M5 Property Addicts. As you already know, I think nobody else in this, in this community has said, no, I don't know TJ. So many of you know TJ, my husband. He has co-founded this company with Rietha, my friend. So the Rietha's family and my family, we are one big family. So we are the Jack Orchard tribe or the Orchard Jack tribe, whichever way you want to put our surname. We blend in really, really well. Our kids, um, when they get together, we suddenly don't have kids anymore. <laughs> and when Retha and TJ get together, it's business. So me and Johanna are looking at each other and we have grown <clears throat> to be very good friends as well. So in terms of family, we really, really work very well together. We can't be in Cape Town and not go home. And home is Retha's house. <laughs> So that is part of the collaborations I have with M5 Property Addicts. The other two that I just wanna briefly mention before I get through to my lessons through deals, then at least I know for 20 minutes, I've well set the foundation of who I am, but not also going on too much longer. Uh, the other part of the collaborations that I have with M5 Property Addicts is that at one stage, their company ran an initiative the first quarter of the year of doing one day trainings exactly like the way I do mine. Our content is similar. My husband and I had come up with the content, but from different viewpoints and from different learning points. So the objective is the same, which is to teach and inform and to share. However, our experiences leading up to some of our deals were different. And you'll probably see in the deals that I share with you this evening, <clears throat> the difference, differences in the deals. And also, M5 Property Addicts run quite a few different projects. So my money is there. So I can earn passive income because I invest <laughs> the smart way, let others go and be landlords. And I still do sourcing because I truly love being on the ground cool so guys are you still with me drop in the q a box yes i'm still with you jen and then we're going to head straight into lessons my lessons through deals cool let's see yes i'm with you jen go for it girl thanks so much for sharing oh wonderful stuff and the list is going on yes it's popping up in orange well that has been Fantastic stuff. So, guys, you are in good company. I am in good company because I'm in part of your company and you're making me feel very, very welcome and able to share from, from who I am and from what I do. So, this is grand. All right. So, this evening, um, like I shared earlier when we started, there was somebody that said, Jen, could you be able to condense what you do in the one day? Um, training. And when I started condensing, <clears throat> I decided I'm going to go straight for the nuggets. I'm going for the straight for the nuggets stories. You can always catch on with me another time, but I'm going straight for the nuggets so that you can make an informed decision. Actually, you know what? I like what she says. Maybe I may just join her at her next one day training. Or you'll say, you know what? I've been to a two day masterclass or I've been through to a one day training with M5 Property Addicts, then I will allow you straight away onto my coaching program. Why? Because then I know at least you have got a good foundation, more especially if you've been through to the one day training with M5 Property Addicts. Because then I know I may have been there, I may have met you, and also the content of what TJ would have shared would definitely be the objective of what both him and I, when we put pen to paper to put this course together, to say, what is it that people need on the ground? That's what we're about. Do you, what do you need on the ground? Not necessarily theory, 
Theory is good, it has its place, don't get me wrong. But what is it that you need when you're on the ground? Cool. So my one, my first, 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 first baby deal. This deal I did um, sourcing. I sold this particular deal. It's a two bed, one bath in Kempton Park. So all of those that have met me at a client, like uh, Anisa would have met me at a particular client, you may recognize some of these pictures because um, this was my first deal. It was an insolvent property. So I want to hear from you in the Q&A box. Do you know what insolvent means? And if you do, type it for me in the Q&A box. Cool. Okay, some of you have an idea. Okay, cool. Okay, let's see. Yes, unable to pay debts. Cool, quite a few of you, if I have to put it all together, what you said, you have basically said an insolvent estate is an estate that is in bankruptcy, 100%. When the owner of the estate passed, they left behind a huge amount of debt than equity. So 100%. So now I wanna share with you, when we got into property, like I said, we were working our way out of huge debt, stupid debt, I call it, because at some stage you think, yo, not that we went into any of our businesses blindfolded, but sometimes you, when you don't know what you don't know, things will take you. And when the one chicken got sick and then 5,000 had to be sent off and you pay 750 rand for a post-mortem and then you have to clean out your farm for the next six weeks and you had chickens growing in a staggered approach, look, the bills are insurmountable after that. At some given point, you just can't come back from that ish. So my main aim when I started looking for deals, I was looking for back-to-back -back deals. That was my main strategy. Why? Because I didn't have to put money down. Why must I put money down when I don't have to? And that's what I was looking for. And I promise you along the way, there were many deals that we found and I had to get wise very quickly. So mid-strategy, I decided if it's not a back-to-back -back deal, and it cannot be a back-to-back -back deal, I need to package this deal and sell it. And that's why primarily I'm a sourcing partner. However, I keep the back-to-back -back deal for myself, and that's become my secondary goal of, if I can find more profit in a deal, that's why I will do a back-to-back. -back. But otherwise, I like the excitement of finding deals. I like the excitement of being that person that's got relationships on the ground, got leads coming to them, I'm just one of those people. In fact, I'm sure many of you can attest that I've got a mouth in me that I talk second to none and I get on with a lot of people. So for me, I find that sourcing is up my personality. Okay. So nonetheless, going back to here, when we found this particular deal, we actually found five. There was Jacques, property uh, estate agent. Okay. He was connected to another company that did a whole lot of estate. Um, they, he did a lot of uh, insolvent properties and he came with five. He came with Blue Marlin. He came with Edge. He came with PFM. He came with Pebbles and he came with another, yeah. Like all of these were in Kempton Park. We started calling the deals after the name of the flats. So when we started unpacking insolvent properties, we found out so much information. So let me just go through the numbers on the deal. When we got there, the place literally was standing together on a prayer, okay? It, it was so, it was quite, the paint was falling off. All sorts of things were happening in that particular apartment. So we negotiated and we got that place for 160. However, it didn't start there. It started at about 275. And we literally worked our way down. Why? Because here is the nuggets on an insolvent property. Do you have your pen and paper ready? This is what I need you to stay alert for. Remember, before we go into property or real estate investing, 
we need to understand what our strategy is. Because if we don't understand our strategy, we're gonna get caught up with a lot of things. When we understand our strategy, the area that we decide to choose, we need to understand that our area and our strategy go hand in hand like, like this, right? And why I'm saying that is that I was looking for back-to-back -back deals, right? I thought this could still be a good back-to-back -back deal because I could back-to-back -back this deal and still sell it under market value with all the negotiations that I had. Wrong. Not an insolvent, not an insolvent property. Why? Most of the property comes with a condition not to sell before registration occurs, which then takes back to back out of the option, out of my space, nada, nix. So of course, can you see why I had to go into sourcing deals? The, the, the OTP, the offer to purchase, is not as straightforward as your normal offer to purchase. The offer to purchase has got all of everything literally wrapped up and sold proper for a seller and not for a buyer. And if there's a buyer, you just sign anything. Guys, I want to warn you at this given point, if you, if you just sign your OTP for an insolvent property, you probably have just got your knickers in a knot at that point. Why? What I've learned as well when it comes to these insolvent properties the bank that is selling it is then making everything in their favor. The reason I was able to take it from 275 to 160 was because I found out the rates and taxes, like we all know, is the seller's responsibility. Not so much. Not every deal. This is why it's important to read your offer to purchase. Why? Because at the end of the day, for a insolvent property, the bank will just change the words around a little bit and you will be paying all of those rates and taxes. So be careful of those rates and taxes. When I sat down, I said, this, this OTP looks funny. That was the first thing that I said, it looks funny. In my lifetime, I bought my flat in Sapphire Town. My husband and I bought our primary residence. We bought the, re the, the farm. We have signed three OTPs. Suddenly, I'm signing this fourth OTP and it looked odd. And when it looked odd, I was like, oh, by the way, due diligence. And I started reading. And the way the wording is, I, if I had purchased it, I would have been liable for the rates and taxes. So just be careful with insolvent properties. The second lesson, occupation may be, may be at acceptance. Even though there's people in the property, meaning you are now liable for rates and taxes. So now you say, yes, I want occupation on acceptance, but there's people in that property. And further down, there could be another clause that says, upon registration, you now need to give your current tenants 30 days notice. So now all of a sudden, you're paying for rates and taxes, and people are still staying there 30 days after registration. Do you think that is interesting lessons or what? And what didn't end there? Sometimes they say, <laughs> like I said to you, sometimes they say the, 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 the um, occupation is 30 days after registration, but of course it will allow for your tenants to get another place. So the rates and taxes have been paid by the bank other times, not all the OTPs say that. Remember, we met up with five insolvent properties. One we went on a joint venture with, because TJ was like, there's a lot more money in this deal. Instead of selling it, let's joint venture it. One he sold, one I sold. In fact, another one, I think in fact we went two buy to lets. Yes, it was two buy to lets. It feels like so long ago, and yet it was almost three years ago. Imagine how crazy is that? So nonetheless, rates and taxes have been paid by the bank sometimes, but sometimes not. Sometimes you can then find, oh, by the way, this is what the OTP says. You can then go back and say, actually, I want to put a lower offer in. And you ask, I'll pay the, the rates and taxes if I can put a lower offer in. And then you'll obviously add it onto your 
added condition on the OTP. And you know, going forward, you're able to no negotiate that down. This is why it got to 160. The rates in taxes and everything else that I met along the way, I just slightly, just ever so now and again, I peeled away and I peeled away at that number. And this is why the importance of negotiation as a property investor is vital for who you are and for how you are going to grow. All right, that's deal number one. So this is a distressed property, not just any distressed property. It's in a deceased estate, which means the bank wants to get rid of it because it's more of a liability than anything. Now, just imagine we just went ahead and signed. What poor poor we could have landed up in. Do you like the figures that came from here? Being in Kempton Park, we were able to put people into um, the flat when it was newly renovated. It rented out for the 5,000. And after the renovation, it brought it up back to market value, which at the time was about 400K. But as an investor, you know the rule, right? You do not sell on market value. Just take 10,000 Rand off of it. Quick in, quick out. All right. So I want to hear from you in the Q&A box. Was that helpful? That, those lessons that I shared with you through those deals, were they helpful at all to you? Fantastic. My box is lit up here. Orange. It's going ching, 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 orange. Ching, 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 orange. <laughs> I love it. So you guys feel that it's helpful? That was a mouthful. Yes, they were. Yes, Jen. Yes, for sure. Wow. Awesome stuff. So I'm grateful that that is helpful. That was a distressed property. Can we go to the next layer? Okay. Promised you. I'm just giving, throwing nuggets this evening, okay? Just boom, 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 boom. <laughs> cool. The next deal, Windsor West. So many beginner investor, uh, investor uh, area. Two bed, one bath, they advertised. What you see is not always what is. So I had uh, seen this, this um, advert in Property 24. When I learned of this person, they were leaving to go to Nigeria. So they were motivated enough, to, motivated enough to sell. So then I thought to myself, oh, from a distressed property, now I've got a motivated seller. Then all of a sudden I felt like the bee's knees. Why? Distressed property, joint venture, nyana, now motivated seller. Like I felt like I was ticking off things on a checkbox. Well, what an experience this deal was. Here goes. So this deal, Two bed, one bath is what they advertised in Windsor West. Long and short of the story, I get to meeting the estate agent. Her name is Precious. I, I remember her as if I met her yesterday. I meet Precious. Precious is also going into the apartment for the first time. So yes, you got it right. I went into Property 24 and I found it quite peculiar that I've got a, one picture of the property, which is the building. Guys, the same thing happened with the previous deal. Here's a tip. When you are on property 24 and you find one picture, I can guarantee you as my name is Genevieve, there is so much more to that property than what meets your eye. Because think about this. How many times have you gone into property 24 and you just see like 5,000 pictures like, on um, one property, you can start asking yourself just how many more pictures can they take of one property? Like, seriously, one property. Well, the reverse is for a property investor. When you start seeing 10 pictures, five pic actually five pictures and more, then you must know, mm -mm, too neat, there's nothing for me. They're not hiding anything. But when you see one picture and it's the outside, we're still of just the building, sometimes just the road. There is no smoke without a fire. That is where you need to investigate. So naturally, when I saw the two bed, one bath and the picture of the building, I decided I am going to go and see this place. 
Precious had advised me, you know, Gina, I'm so sorry. I didn't get a chance to get into the property. So it's going to be my first time into the property, yada, yada, yada. Well, myself and Precious go into this property. And what a fascination it was for me. Now, I'm still new in the game. I need you all to understand this. You see these ugly looking pictures, ladies and gents, these ugly looking pictures, a property investor was still willing to buy the deal. So what I teach my students now, guys, whatever you can, please don't follow me. Learn from my mistake. Don't have such ugly looking pictures. Don't be scared to ask to take pictures. Why? Because it's imperative for you to have your, your log of what you've seen. Okay. So nonetheless, me and Precious go in. But before I get in, Precious says, oh, you know, Gina, I need to tell you that the person has uh, migrated to Nigeria and recently lost control of, his, of managing his property. So I'm thinking, motivated, turned distressed in one deal. Like, of course, my eyes at this time is beaming, but I needed to keep all my business under wrap, okay? I wear my heart on the sleeve. So nonetheless, we go in there. Dudes, there's one of the rooms separated by a curtain. Two different people are staying in the one room separated by a curtain. The lounge has got a curtain. The small room is a room on its own. And then there's a patio that was covered. And then I'm thinking to myself, I've just gone counted five people here. How is this two bed, one bath? So technically, it was two bed, one and a half bath, because it was just a toilet, and then there's a bathroom and toilet, and then this closed off patio. But of course, everybody that was in there, what I soon learned is that many of them worked at the Cresta Mall. And you know when you've got waitrons, bar staff, and all of that, they work until very late at night in the restaurant? They all walked together. So paying one eight per person and you are kind of bunking it with your mates, I suppose, you know, at this point in time, you, 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 you work your way around what is there. And this is how this particular place was cash flowing, something crazy. So let me break these numbers down for you nicely, but because I needed to paint the picture of how I found the deal. I get there, I find out he's migrated, he's turned distressed. We get in there, we find the patio's covered, there's five tenants. Cash flow, 4,000. How is it that we derived that? On Property24, when you go into the rental side and you start looking for two bed, one bath in Windsor West at the time, it was showing that if you get the two bed, one bath, then the rent versus the rent you see there and the rent that you will find out there, two different things. That area rented for 2,800 Rand. Now I need you to have that information digest. The person that was staying alone in the smaller room was actually the main tenant. That guy was the one that sublet the flat for the other four. So that guy was cash flowing something quite interesting. And funny enough, I didn't even understand the logic behind it, that if that person was able to make money and so much money, why were they not paying the, the owner that had recently moved to Nigeria? And I wondered what beef they may have been. But nonetheless, when you go online, online to do your research about the area that you are interested in, it is always a good place to start. However, as a property investor, you want to have your feet on the ground. You want to go and see what is happening. This is how I was able to see property 24, the rental income, 2,800, versus going through to Windsor West myself, being on the ground in that flat. Then I started seeing what was really what was for what. It was really after about three different visits, having brief conversations with the different tenants that were there, that I collated this information. It was not in one go, okay? 
So as a property investor, what do you do? You do not view a property once. You view it multiple times. In fact, my badly, poorly taken pictures were taken two different occasions when I was able to sneak in a picture. Because at some stage, I felt like, should I be taking the picture? I feel like a sneak. I'm putting people's business out there. But nonetheless, there's emotions that you will go through as a newbie. There's emotions that you will go through when you are stuck and you've just started in this journey. And you may feel a little intimidated if you've just come out of getting that property education and then somebody says you can take pictures, put it in a proposal and sell it to a, uh, an investor. It sounds good. By the time you get to doing it, you are so bookbound. Why? Because you think, oh my God, is this legal? So guys, I need that to sink in. I know that feeling. And these are the pictures that remind me of that feeling. These are the pictures that remind me, you know what, Jen, at one stage you were terrified to do what comes so naturally for you. So if you're feeling that way, I want to share with you this evening, I think it's okay. You just keep pushing, you keep pushing, and you will push past that fear. The more you practice, the easier it becomes. Not always, but the easier it does become. Now I have conversation. I go out in the field with my students. I'm there to help them build their confidence. And some days I'm also still like, oh, this real estate agent feels a little bit intimidating. But all I'm saying to you guys, you're going to go through that. There's, um, what is that saying? Feel the fear and do it anyway. It is so true for property investing. So nonetheless, as I was sharing with you, this was the rental income. The market value of that flat was 400,000. Eventually, the offer that was accepted at 200K. Now, of course, I, I sold my way through with this investor. This particular deal, I was able to, uh, I was paid 18,000 Rand for this particular deal because I negotiated like a beast with this deal, if I have to say so myself. And yet, when I look back, I think, oh, I had a little bit shoddy negotiation skills. It wasn't shoddy. I just was fearful. So nonetheless, eventually, my investor bought this property for 200000 They did a renovation for 35000 If he chose to go through and sell this particular property, on a flip, he would have made hundred k. But my investor is a passive income investor. So before I move away from this deal, there's two or three other lessons I want to share with you. What I learned on this particular deal is to ask my questions a lot more specific to the investors that I was selling to. So up until this time, I've met a few people at Sappen, I've met one or two people at Toastmasters even, and I would share what I was doing and so when I sold the first two deals, I was selling it to whosoever will, will buy, right? Well, I got a little bit clever after that. I thought to myself, if I'm now selling the second deal in this space, TJ sold his deal. He's also got a joint venture. Why can I not be specific with my investors? So when I introduce myself at Sappen, I say, hi, I'm Genevieve Jack. I am a sourcing partner. My area of specialty is the northwest to west of Johannesburg. And then they will introduce themselves. And the moment they say, yes, I'm looking for a property or a deal, then I'm, I ask them, so what is your area? And some investors don't know their area. They say, anyway, as long as I'm cash flowing, Passive income, active income. Because I know there's a lot of us that will get quite st stuck with this whole cash flow thing, okay? I want to ask, is it passive or is it active? Because if it's a flip, then you must know if you're going into an area like Windsor West, you're going to find deals that you can flip, right? But nine out of 10 times in my experience, I'm not ruling it out. Hear me nicely. In my experience, I have then found that in Windsor West, 
I have found a lot more passive income properties for the investors that are interested in Windsor West. Okay, so I ask my future investor, what is your area of choice? What is your budget? Is your budget OPM or is it cash? And let me tell you why I found this recipe good for me. Is it good for everybody? You've got to try it to find out if it's going to be good for you. It became good for me because then I knew that if somebody said springs, I'm going to say thank you very much, but I don't go to springs, but I know somebody that's in springs that can hook you up. For example, if I know a sourcing partner in Springs, why? Because there's no way I'm going to drive from the West Strand to the East Strand a few times to view a property. I've done that with Henley on Clip, and each time it cost me a quarter tank of gas. And I wondered, you know, where and tear quarter tank of gas? And um, when somebody just wanted to see it, three investors later that they, like I was thinking, okay, after a while, how many thousands is going to start costing me? Why? Because a quarter, quarter tank of gas was, was properly into, um, I think it was sitting at about 300 rand. Because when I top up my tank, it's one one. So if I go three times with an investor, I've gone once to see it for myself, twice to see it for myself, potentially the third time. Now, the moment I introduce anybody else into the space, that's two and a half thousand rand and wear and tear. So in my mind, I also don't want to put myself way out there for a deal that may not eventually materialize or whatever the case is. So I get clever about some things. Why? Because I also want to safeguard my time, my energy, my resources. So if you were sourcing partner, if there's one thing I can already share with you, if you can take any of these nuggets to work for you, I promise you, you are not going to be left in want because if the more you you focus on an area, something's going to, something's got to give, okay? So I quickly learned those different lessons. What is your area, Mr. or Miss Investor? What is your budget? Because if I have to ask, is it cash or is it OPM? The moment it's other people's money, whether it's the bank or whether it's an angel investor, I don't care where else it is. If it's not cash, there's some things that are not in my control because some people will say equity. I reckon on some level, if they know already how much equity they've got in their bond, it's as good as cash. But again, you get to know your investor this way. And this is one of the deals that I really started learning. The more I ask my investor what they're looking for and I zone in on what my investors are looking for, I already got the money. The money is now not a question. And if I've got more than three, four investors in the same area, I win. Why? Because it could be a passive income investor or it could be an active income investor. It doesn't matter because whatever's going to come up, I've got both and I've got money. You know, suddenly I feel like I've got bigger wings. What does it do? It propels me. It gets me excited. Then I want and then I want to do why? Because I get excited that I've got my money to spend. Crazy, right? So, Deal number two, tell me what did you learn from there? What did you say, Jen? Those were interesting nuggets that you were sharing with me. Tell me what did you learn from deal number two? I'm waiting in the Q&A box. I saw there was somebody else that came in. The numbers had gone up. In the Q&A box is where we're communicating whatever questions or whatever comments that you've got to share, you can share it in there. What did you learn from my deal number two? Fantastic. Need to determine one strategy, passive or active income. If you're a sourcing partner, you must be on your toes. <laughs> I like that one. Fantastic. So you guys are learning here. That is wonderful. Can you see how quickly somebody motivated to sell can turn distressed? Can you see how 
when you know what your desktop research tells you and you put your feet on the ground, that you can come up with two different answers. And also, did you see that a job of a sourcing partner is not just because some of us want to get out of debt or we want to make money towards um, creating some sort of capital for a flip? Because I know there's some people that are sourcing right now so that they can create capital for, the, for their next flip so that they've got all the closing costs, money, and all of that in hand. There's a whole lot more to a sourcing partner. Wonderful. Guys, you've blown up the q and box. I'm going to say I reckon I've, I've touched on quite a few things and answers. We're going to move on to the next deal. Don't worry, I've only got the best of three. <laughs> all right. And here is why I put this deal. This is not my deal personally however i was part of cooking up a strategy for this deal yes cooking up a strategy what do i mean by that so remember earlier on we spoke about collaboration with m5 property addicts so yes the collaboration goes where sometimes we sit and we start we, we bounce questions off of each other from time to time because there's other stuff that we are also involved in and of course this is not just my business partner. This is my bed partner too. Although I am not part of, but we are a we when it comes to this because in our household, we support each other. If I say to Tao Rai, Tao, please can you come and share X, Y, and Z with my students? He's going to rise to the occasion and he's not going to ask me, Jen, how much? <laughs> okay? He's going to rise to the occasion. Why? because we support each other. So onto this deal. I've done a back-to-back -back deal before, but it was a he another hectic one. But nonetheless, the reason I bring this one up is that I thought it was fascinating because through my class, there comes a lot of people that are business partners and they're business partners and they want to understand how could they leverage from each other in business. So here's something. If you don't know the structure of M5 Property Addicts, the long and short is that Riatha and TJ are the co-founders and they've got different franchises, but none of these franchises in terms of paperwork is on the paperwork like Riatha and TJ because they are the directors. Nonetheless, there's a different contract that they have going. So the Durban franchise found this deal or however they found it as a collective. And then they decided because this is a bank repossessed property, my husband said it, it only needs a small cleanup. You know, his idea of a small cleanup would be a renovation of 300,000. But this is the guy that finds a his heritage site, early days of being a property investor. Same one. <laughs> so nonetheless, this deal, the, the Durban franchise finds it. Once they find this deal, what was fascinating about this is that he then signed the OTP did all that he needed to do, negotiated down, they did that as a conglomerate, and they bought the property for 900,000. However, it was Bevan in his personal capacity, who was not on the same paperwork as M5 Property Addicts, that bought this deal. Now, M5 Property Addicts has got muscle, so they were able to now buy the deal from Bevan, who is the business partner. But they bought it at 1.5. However, the bank only financed 1.450. So now, if we can do quick maths, how's about this, right? If you go in as a M5, you buy it for one you you buy it for one five, but the bank only gives you one four five zero. Oh. Your other partner has bought it for 900K. This board is, oh, it's not the best color that I'm using. Let's see if I put it in red. Do you see it? Okay, you see it somewhat. Okay. Now, do a quick calculation 1.450 minus 900K. I would like the answer popping up in the QA box. What is the answer? I 
I've done it quickly. Come guys, are you getting a little bit tired? We're only one hour in and I reckon I've spoken fast enough to, to condense a lot of lessons in here. So we're coming, we're coming up we're nicely in one, one hour. So we're coming up with <clears throat> a lot of good lessons and we're coming closer towards the end. Cool. So somebody has answered for me. Thank you very, very much. Actually, a lot of you have answered for me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, all righty. So yes, it was 550. So do you think the renovation of 300K is covered? Well covered, right? Now, while the paperwork is doing its thing at the bank, do you think it's feasible to go to a, an investor and ask the investor for 300K at a guarantee that you will pay them back within six months? You give them a fairly, fairly good enough ROI? Why? Because if you're getting 550, 300K comes from there. What is the ROI? What is the 15% ROI of 300,000? Right, let's see, is, it, is the answers coming through? Because I don't want to be the only one talking here. What is 15% ROI of 330,000? Forty-five k. I'm so glad that we've got quite a few participants here. Okay, cool. So now, <clears throat> do you think five hundred and fifty k minus three hundred and forty-five k still leaves you with money? So here you go into business together, and if at some point you are unable to, if at some point you are unable to fund some of the deals, do you think maybe? If you can then agree uh, sufficiently with your business partner that uh, going into doing a back-to-back -back deal can help you, because think about it, they were then left with forty-nine thousand five hundred. Thank you so much for the two people that sent that information back to me. They were left with that information, I mean that money, after finding a deal, knowing they needed to renovate it. They found an investor, gave him 15% ROI, still was able to <clears throat> give him back that full amount of money because the bank is actually funding this deal. Do you think that after some time when there is some sort of market value in here that, uh, well, not even after some time, they're bringing it up to a 24-bed student accommodation and they've already got all contracts in place because they've done the dirty work for that. This is my next lesson that I am actually learning is a lot more about student accommodations and I'm learning it from my collaboration partners. Why? Because they've got one in Durban. They've actually got the second one going on in Durban and there's one cooking up in Cape Town. Um, actually two cooking up in Cape Town. So do you think that they're good partners to learn from? The, there was a competition I ran. This is just, by the way, information. There's a competition I ran on my page on FHC Consulting, as many of you have also come through FHC Consulting. I'd run a competition, and when there was a winner that was chosen, only to find out this person is, he's got an interest in student accommodation, one. They've just bought land in Shoshanguve. So I get to teaching this information that I'm learning from my collaboration partners to somebody that's just won a competition. How awesome when the universe conspires to make you great. Like I like to see things like that. It's awesome. Do you think that was a fascinating deal? 24 beds, 70,000 guaranteed because they've done all the checks and balances. And this is around the corner from Westville. Um, Westville University. Like the, you throw a stone and I'm sure it gets into the university's yard. All right. So guys, 
on this last deal that we're talking about, I want to hear from you in the Q&A box. What have you learned from this deal? Good stuff. You can leverage off of your business partners. You can use the bank's money in a lot of different ways. Collaboration, awesome stuff. Collaboration is so important. I find that the collaboration th th is something that I hold dear in this particular um, agreement that I've got with M5 Property Addicts. In, in fact, some of you have been through their one day training. And two of you are then on one-on-one -on -one coaching with me because of that, because you looked and you saw me familiar face. Like, ah, Jen, I know you, what you're doing here. <laughs> so collaboration is certainly very important. Yeah, there's a lot of comments coming through. You guys are so funny this evening. What did you eat a bowl of clowns today? Yes, I definitely agree with the... Um, there's another one, collaboration is needed in some instances where capital is needed, absolutely. So guys, I'm so glad that you were able to then get those lessons that I've shared with you. So just before we start closing off on the nuggets, and then I will then expand on two things that is also another big question in my space. I really trust that this, one, this first hour and five minutes has been valuable. You got to know me. You got to know a lot about my collaborations, where I fit in, how some businesses work, that I also work as a business from business to business, but in my individual capacity. You've also understood the, the different deals that I've gone through. However, the one thing I want to bring home to many of you is that this didn't happen overnight. It was a process. It was a process where we paid school fees in school and outside of school. You know, some days I have to laugh at it because I'm like, I remember saying to my husband, your babe, approaching 40, I never thought I'd get broke because I did everything the right way. I've been making a hustle since I was 16. I was working all sorts of odd jobs from the age of 16 and never been into debt, not a debit order bounce before the age of 37. <laughs> I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm getting 40 and I thought I was supposed to be comfortable. And, and with all of what's happening in business, business can wipe one out. You know, we had to get to a point now that we look and we say, how do we protect our assets? So my, my question to you, how do you protect your assets? How do you protect you as a person as well? Yesterday I had a coaching session. Yes, it was on a Sunday. Some people I do make exceptions for. Only the one-on-one -on -one students, though, um, for a Sunday. Because everybody knows that it, London Bridge must be falling down for a Sunday for anything to happen for me for work. Because um, yesterday I made two concessions. I had the webinar where there were so many questions, so many questions and concerns around coaching. Like, people are so afraid out there. And I really, really empathize with a lot of people. But nonetheless, going back to coaching, when I was sharing with um, the lady that I was with saying that, you know, even in business, two friends can go into business. Even before the company is registered, then the friendship can fall apart. Why? Because at the end of the day, we're now already saying, what's my part? No, what's your part? No, what are you doing? No, what are you doing? No, I'm bringing money. You bringing what? You know? So when you go into business, guys, I want to say to you, I want to say to you that have yourself covered. Did M5 or has M5 got contracts in place with the people that they work closely with? Absolutely. Have things in order. I see there's somebody that says, I feel like you're talking to me about paying, <laughs> paying school fees. It happens. You know what? We paid school fees the hard way. We paid school fees where we had gone through so many different businesses. But as an entrepreneur, what makes us strong today? All the lessons that we've gone through already, what makes you strong today? 
what makes what brings you here today some of the names that i recognize i know what brings you here today we've had sessions in fact one of the guys i'm going to call you by name he came to my office we had a session and because i saw he was serious about <laughs> where he's going to and what he's doing when we were done with the session he, and he asked me so how much i said no there's no charge and he says no but there at the training you said i said no it's to filter people out because sometimes people just look for a way in and they look for a means to get information but you guys are here because you've paid school fees you guys are here because you've gone through some things the hard way and some of you have told me that you're here just to understand why have I positioned property coaching in such an economical way? Some of you are here because you're curious about the one day training and some of you may never come back. I don't know. But at the end of the day, you are here for a reason. What school fees have you paid? I know my husband and I, we found our coaching receipt a couple of weeks ago. And I almost got heartburn again for that 95,000. Because in this household, we paid over 100,000 Rand for property education and coaching. Because we've already paid 5 million school fees. <laughs> okay. So, ladies and gents, I really trust and I hope that this hour and 10 minutes, I've gotten into the nuts and bolts of the things that you're wanting to learn. I just want to go through some other information that I didn't capture on the PowerPoint. So I trust you still got your pen and paper. When you're starting your journey, there's different schools of thought on how you can get leads. So let's talk about getting leads. How do you get property leads? Some people go into Property 24. Nothing wrong with Property 24. Here is what to look out for. When you, have a, a, you find a property good price, you go into that property and there's three, four, five pictures, pretty, move on. That's what I do. Why? Because if they show me pretty things, I have nothing to fix and I have no money to make. Look at the description. Your descriptions for investors look like calling all investors. This beautiful uh, once Victorian what what house uh, in all its majesty is just looking for your TLC. Like they become poetic. When you start seeing things are poetic, then you must know, I need to sit and go and see this place, guys. I need to sit nicely here and read this and go and see this place. When you see one picture, go and see the place. And then when you do a, a new search, you've got your area, you choose your first three property types. Don't fill in any filters, click on search. And then when you scroll down just a little, see the first um, advert, that first advert, whichever real estate agency is that first advert, it means that agent has got property, got market shares in that area. So if you see the first house that comes up with an advert and it's Rawson, they, they say, they call it default settings. All it is, is showing you who's got market share. So of your estate agents you want to meet in that area, meet that first one. Why? Because if they've got market share, they may know a lot more other properties that are out there and they'll, they'll probably be the agency of choice that people will call when they're making that call to sell their place. Okay, you could set up notifications. You can go onto the Green Gazette, go and find the area of your choice. In your area of your choice on the Green Gazette, you then be able to see the defendant's attorney. So if you're one of those people that can go and have conversation with an attorney that you don't know of, whatever, go and you can find that particular way. And my personal favorite that's now become my personal favorite is Facebook. If you've got an interest in Northcliffe, go and find the community group called I Love Northcliffe. They're going to ask you a few questions and where you stay. Tell them that you're looking to buy in Northcliffe. 
which is not a lie. They will grant you access. And once you get in, you're then able to say, you know what, I look for DIYs and um, I'm looking for a project like one of those fix me uppers that I can restore. Do you know the people that don't like the broken down houses in that area will start telling you about all the houses in that area that you can go and find? Yes, I've gotten four new real estate friends, real estate agent friends that way. There's a question that came through the first ad. Is it not the paid ads, the premium listings? Generally, no. That first ad, when you first, when you get to that default, what I've learned from an estate agent, because this is something very recent to me, and this is what I'm currently playing with Lloyd. I'm, 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 you, when you go in there, they say that that particular agent has got the most properties in the area. Therefore, they've got the market share of that area. So that's what I have learned from somebody that is, is working at KW. So of course, I put, I put it to the test and I want to know, is it going to be worth my while? And so far, when I've gone into Florida, it has been worth my while. I don't know if it's also for the fact that I now am also friends with this person on real estate aid, um, on, on Facebook, you know, the real estate agent, but I started playing in different ways on getting my leads coming to the table. So guys, how do you find your leads at the moment? Share with me in the Q&A box. How do you find your leads at the moment? Okay. So many of you are also the same way. Online, real estate agents, I never thought of the Green Gazette. I choose the Green Private Property, Property 24. I choose the Green Gazette because you don't pay. Sheriff HQ, you pay. Everybody's on Sheriff HQ the way I find. I haven't yet approached attorneys off the Green Gazette, but I do encourage my students that are interested in auctions, maybe to give the Green Gazette a try because you've got a lot more information at your disposal for free. Cool, agents, yeah, perfect. So this is how you guys are getting. So it's good, you're building relationships, all right? So this is the, the ways that I've shared with you, this is how I to get my leads. So is there a question or any questions that you would like me to address before I unpack what my services are so that you all know from wherever you are sitting at this point in time that I may be able to service you or not? in future. There's one disclaimer I want to make though. If you are looking for commercial, I can help you find commercial and I'll tell you how I can find, how, how I know to find commercials. However, the due diligence in commercials, that is the only investor I have not um, serviced as yet. So I want to make that one very clear from the beginning. If you, want to, if you want to know where you would fit in in my services, I, there's a lot of different investors that I assist. The only investor that I have not assisted because I do not have experience in that space is commercial. So I would rather then say to you from the word go, if you are interested in commercial coaching, I am not your coach. I hope that is fairly straightforward and that's okay for me to share with you. Why? Because I don't also want to waste your time in any shape, form, or manner. It's not that I'm, I've got limitations in that. I've got no interest at this point in time in commercial. However, I must say I am looking for a nine, apart, a, a nine apartments or nine unit building, but I've got a few of the real estate agents looking for me. Okay? Am I able to do running the numbers and things like that. Yes. And I'm going to have the help of my dear husband on that one. Why? M5 Property Addicts has bought a number of buildings. So collaboration again, right? So guys, is there any questions? I just see a lot of thumbs up recommendation. I really love, I love, enjoy the love that's coming through. I really appreciate it because then at least I know the energy that I'm using and sharing with you this evening 
is not just because I had nothing to do yesterday that I agreed for the webinar today. <laughs> but to know that at 24 hours notice, so many of you have come through. That is, um, that is a gem of notes, an absolute gem of notes. Okay, cool. So, so far there's many of you that said, no, none at the moment, you're doing well. Thank you for your lessons. Some of your lessons are very interesting. I'd love to hear the stories behind it. Then come through to the next training on the 20th of July. If you want to hear more about that. All right. Cool. On that note, ladies and gents, I want to then share with you, I have an advert that looks something like this. How to find a property investment opportunity. It's a one day training, as I shared with many of you. So that's what the picture generally looks like so that you spot it from the from the next time you see it. Here is a few pictures of um, some of my classes. So basically, like I shared with you, the classes are 12 and under. So far, I've had a minimum of five at a maximum of 12, and I've had numbers in between. And it's a one day training. My campus, um, I mean, I've already shared with many of you earlier where it is. However, I know that you were astute enough that you will pay before coming through and not just surprise because you will not have a seat that day, the day you decide, oh, I'm just going to come through. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, the reason I choose such a small number, I could go the way of hoo ha ra ra, but that's not me. I learned that very quickly. I plugged into a client at one given stage and I learned that is, that is personally not my style. I can do it for a short period of time. I can help, I can plug in and I can do what is needed for a client. But by choice, I choose a small class. Why? Each and every one of you before you leave, even when you come through in the hundreds through to the different clients that I know, I would still call you by name before you left. I still remember your story for the longest time. Why? It's just me. I'm that type of people's person, but I'm not selling me to you today because many of you already know, you know what, Jen is one of those people that will remember my story to death. Anyone in the house who knows that and can factually say, yes, Jen, you will remember my story to death. <laughs> Oh, yes, I see. I see a story that's come through. Yes. So some of them I'm not going to read out because they're naughty. <laughs> yes, but a lot of you know, Jen, if it comes to connecting, you know how to connect. You sh Jen, you showed me who you were. Jen, you were honestly in sharing who you were. You empathized. Wonderful. But again, this is who I am and this is where I'm going. And at the end of the day, it's always good to, to know and to connect with people. That's why I choose a small class. Right. So that small class, you'll see that it is, um, <laughs> more comments are coming through. Um, you'll see that uh, I advertise it once a month, but for July, I'm doing it the 22nd. No, I keep saying the 22nd. I must stop, I must stop saying that. Um, I am doing it for on the 20th and on the 27th, okay? And there's a, there's a good reason for that because of high demand. So I want to see how far I can, you know, um, service people. Uh, there's always references that, are, references that are coming through, which is really good. So I just really feel very blessed and favored in that avenue. So um, that's why this month I've got the 20th and the 27th. But again, for me, I will only open the 27th when the 20th is full and then consider that. So I trust that some few pictures of different classes and me sharing, you'll see that I'm sitting at the end, end of the table here at the bottom left and maybe your bottom right hand. I don't know how, how the computer just ch you know, changes our position, but I, I sit and I share and I'm... Um, even during a break, here on the top right-hand corner, uh, Barbara in the green and Oscar were having quite a conversation there. Um, even during the break, when others had left the class, we were still 
chit chattering about. Because for me, it's all about connection. And if you go on the journey of coaching with me, I want you to know that I've got your back. And that at the end of the day, you've got any time you want to ask a question, ask the question. The only time, the only thing I always ask is allow me 24 hours just in case I'm at a client or just in case I am maybe not well or I'm busy that day. But the fact that we do group coaching, which is I'm going to discuss in a minute, the fact that we do group coaching, I also in, in, encourage my previous students to answer. Okay? So that there's company. I'll talk about that in a minute. So I trust that how to find a property investment opportunity, the one day class is made clear. Everything that I went through today, it is blown up. Why? Because we're engaging, we're asking questions. Some people want to know how did you find this? How come this? How come that? And that's the sort of interaction I keep going at the class. So you will see many of these pictures. However, the conversation is a lot different. Okay. I go onto the board with the numbers and I just realized that some of my numbers conversation here this evening would have been um, really bad because the board is shining. I think the next time I'll bring out my flip chart when I'm busy with a webinar because the flip chart doesn't have a light shining, <laughs> shining on it. So, okay, guys, is there anything about the one day training that you would like to know? Ask now or forever hold your pieces. <laughs> Just kidding. Somebody asked me, so why is it so cheap? The reason I have it that cheap, $2.99 for one, $3.99 for two people. We already pay so much for so many things. One. Two, I learned when I gave it away for free. People tend not to pitch up for free. I did at one stage gave a whole classroom away for free. Two people pitched up. But I gave them my energy, all that they came for for that day. I gave my full energy. But of course, it was part of my experimentation during my case study. So I, I knew what I was doing there. And of course, it was also just to prove that during a case study, there's a lot of things that you can find out. And that's one of them. Um, so if somebody parts up with just a little bit of money, I, I, don't, I don't care that they leave with information galore. Why? Because it is their prerogative to do so. Okay. And it's also my prerogative. I don't share, dangle a carrot and pull it back from you. If you're going to ask me during this, this one day a question, we're going to unpack it for all that it's worth. I promise you that much. Cool. Thanks so much, guys. Nearing the end. I, I, I really am, I cannot tell you how excited I am because I wondered about the two hours. But to know that so far we're one and a half hours in and I'm already starting to explain about the services. <laughs> All right. Anyone excited with me or is it just me smoking my socks here? <laughs> Fantastic. So here's it, guys. Some of you have asked that question, that undying question. So tell us about this eight-week program and what's so special. When is price? For two, I believe you'll find partners for those that don't have one. Um, Lloyd, all the time, whenever you go on, whenever I've got a class, um, if you find two, 299 for one person, the next ticket says two adults, 399. So if I, I trust I'm answering the question, when is price for two? Uh, this last week, though, I did have buy one, get one free. I very seldom have those, uh, but I did. And it's really to promote it for the two business partners or um, bed partners, as I call it, because uh, the bed partners, you know, me and TJ, we all, you know, there's, at some stage we do go wherever we go to together to learn, but not all the time. So yes, you definitely will find partners for those and again, it's also, where is, who is your friendship? Who do you keep company with? Um, do you have somebody that you know, two friends that you know, that you can say, hey, go there 
or may not be going together, but booked together to get there, that sort of a thing. And really, that's the flexibility that I'm really creating. Um, and it's the commitment behind it as, as well. So the eight-week coaching program, I know some of you have started reading, which is okay. So this is how it goes. From the first one day, I literally go through the whole day of giving you a lot more nuggets than I was able to give you in one and a half hours, okay? We, um, I, I suppose, you know, we get an opportunity to really, really connect. I don't go on a long story about coaching because you either come there with coaching in mind or not. You're either coming there to find out more information or not. And I believe that already when we halfway in the day, we already know whether we're going with coaching or not. So it's not a long, elaborate pr process of selling. So I'm not going to make this also a long, elaborate process of selling. So the eight-week coaching program is a group-based coaching. Yes, I still do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but that one-on-one -on -one coaching needs to be motivated. Some people do come and ask, Jen, can I still come to you one-on-one? -on -one? Then I first say, let's go through the group coaching that your fees are discounted later. There's one person that pushed back and said, no, I want one-on-one -on -one from the beginning. There are still some exceptions to the rules that I take, but I only take two people like that every six to eight weeks. Okay. And I've got my own reasons. I don't want to feel inundated. Um, I want people to get the best of me, not the rest of me. And I also find that towards the end of the year, I've got a lot more time. So therefore, I'm able to increase it when I need to. And I still want to know that whoever has come through any of my coaching, there's value that they leave with. So the eight-week coaching program, after the one day, I unpack this process. The following, either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, we start the program. The four week, the first four weeks is online group coaching, which means we will meet here on webinar like we've met on webinar. However, we will meet on a meeting, but not on a webinar. So let me just clarify. A webinar like this, you only see me and I'm jab jabbering, you know, with my uh, presentation. But when we're in group coaching, the way we log in, we see everybody that's logged in. Today, I didn't know if you want to see all how many faces that have come through, like all 54 of us that are here. I don't know if you want to see all 54 people, <laughs> okay? But at the end of the day, um, that's what, you know, that's the difference. You'll be able to see your partners in crime. Some people, you'll say, but where did that person come from? They were not at the training on, on, on Saturday. Some people fall over from month to month. Others have gone through a different program and they will come through to me. Like Lloyd, the, one of the guys whose questions I was just answering, I, because I recognize his surname, he's one of the guys that, for example, if he comes on to another program, he may not have come through my one day, but he's come through M5 Properties one day, but we also know him from a different client where I was supporting at a stage. So there are times like that, there are different connections that you will find that eventually will then come onto the program. So we see each other. Okay, the first week, we talk about navigating, navigating online, finding opportunities. We don't just talk about it. As I'm sharing the presentation right now, I share my screen. I start showing you the different indicators on what you need to look at at Property24, on the Green Gazette. I show you some of the work that I've just done on social media, simple posts, the responses that come from the post, how I respond to those different posts and where all else online I go looking for opportunities. When we are done with each and every session that we have, I upload those videos so that you can get a link. The link is to YouTube. However, all those videos are unlisted, which means only the person that's got the link can access the video, which then means if there's five of you in the class, only five of you will access the link. Okay. For me, I just, I like that privacy. I like that privacy. I, I like the conversation that we have because when we open the floor for conversation, what is your viewpoint? What have you done before? You start hearing how people are popping from different avenues and bringing 
their experiences to the table. Week two, we go through running the numbers. You will get the calculator for free. So every time we have a meeting, if there's any artifacts that go with that meeting, you will get the artifacts. Like navigating online, um, then you get a checklist. Meaning, now that you've learned to navigate online, meet the different estate agents, there's a checklist of questions that you can start asking to get used to asking those questions. The following week, we run numbers. When you're running numbers, you look at the checklist again, look at the um, spreadsheet and see where can you now become a little bit more specific with your questions. It builds up your confidence. It builds up your conversation with your real estate agent. Okay. Week three, we talk about networking and negotiation and the power of both. Negotiation is really on the back of what you've seen on the different deals. What can you start negotiating on? Um, do you identify that negotiation is a skill that you need to build? If you need to build it, how are you building it? So it's quite a conversation, it's quite an engagement. And I also share with you some of the tips and tricks and tools that I use for negotiating. Network, I mean, most of us hit hashtag sapping just now. We're all about that sapping life. I'm not going to even take that away from Andrew Walker. He did absolutely awesome when he put that particular community together. So I'll be eternally grateful for, to him because he's my household coach, but more so he's put a platform like that together where we were also able to sell deals and we were able to meet with like-minded people. Week four, <clears throat> we start unpacking a lot more about the OTP. If you can remember back to one of the deals that I shared with you earlier today, we spoke about the OTP. Yes. So we'll start talking about the suspensive clauses. When you start reading it, if there's a suspensive clause in your um, OTP, because the seller is only doing this until that happens, yada, 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 then at least we start understanding what those different connecting points are. And what is really stellar is that most of my sessions have had at least one real estate agent and the viewpoint of real estate agent and the OTP is also golden. So again, all of those links will get sent to you at the back of every conversation we have. So before I move on to week five and six, right on the extreme um, end, Telegram, we've got a FHC property coaching group, which then means this is the platform for all messaging. This is the platform where all the, S, the, all the links will be sent, the different attachments will be sent, but over and above it will also be sent to your email. Why I've got a platform, property, I mean the property coaching platform on Telegram. If you have, uh, no, let's put it this way. If I put a whole lot of people together on one group, they don't get to see each other's details unless they let it out. So it's a lot more private than WhatsApp. WhatsApp, you get to see everybody's numbers and you, you know, people to start calling people. We don't exactly want people to start selling to each other. Whereas on Telegram, I would have to start a secret conversation with you. You also have to be online to get that message and to accept the secret conversation with me, okay? And it's only then that you then decide if there's somebody else that you are connecting with in the group, do you want to share numbers? So this is why I choose Telegram. So a lot of communication. If you're thinking about something, you've just got a random question, you don't want to make a phone call, we learn together, drop it on that group. You'll also be met with everybody else that has already been on coaching on that group. Why? Because it's a continuous basis until you decide no, I'm so much at fault. I don't want to be on that group anymore. Then you exit after all your coaching. But, you know, historically, nobody has exited, fortunately. And anybody from the one group, if they want to join in a session on running numbers again, they can join it in all the future sessions as well. So that's also one of the things the group's like. So back to week five and six. Week five and six, this is when you get my time with you in the field. Why? Because I want to understand when you're talking to an estate agent, have you built rapport with them? Uh, what are you looking out for? What is your understanding of distress? And then we start unpacking the strategy on 
So why real estate uh, investing for you? Why are you here? And we had that one-on-one -on -one time. And I found systematically up until this point, nobody's proved me wrong. After two hours, we have covered everything that we need in that time. In the same breath, you also get, if you choose not to go for a, um, a field visit or a, to see a distressed property, or you were busy with work or whatever the case is, then we meet in my office and we simply have a two hour coaching session, which is the equivalent for me being in the field, which is also two hours. So you choose either or. While this is happening for, for, for 10 days or two weeks, you get a video series sent to you called The Power of Execution. The video series is no more than 10 minutes per day for you listening to a video. Some of the videos are as short as three to four minutes. Why? It is just planting seeds on, for example, intention. Intention without execution goes for a ball of chalk and then gives you just that different thoughts to think about. Why are you here? It will give you different examples in power of execution. But what I like about it, it you, you start going here because you've now had four weeks of skill nobody can take away from you ever. <coughs> so you'll always be able to find a deal. You always know how to run numbers. You always know how to negotiate. <coughs> Sorry. You always know how to do those things and nobody can take that away from you. Now, we just need to get into your headspace to understand what are you here for? Some people like the romantic idea of, of property. There's no romance in property. Property is simple, but it's not easy. Nonetheless, that is what happens over week five and six. Week seven, I call it open mic because the last open mic we had was two hours later where the six of us were having quite a conversation. The questions that could have come up, your experiences, whatever it is that you want to share, whatever questions you want to unpack, this is your time. Because all until this point, my, my request is that you, do, you are sharing, you are asking, okay? But now week seven, uh, it's just free for all. We just, we just talk. Okay, there's control, but we just talk. We share. We talk about anything that is, is going on in our space at that given point. Week eight, which is so special. I'm going to show you guys a picture just now. Week eight, there's a face-to-face -face session. So if we met in the classroom, um, say, for example, we met in the classroom Saturday or today, Eight weeks from now, we're going to meet again in that classroom. Why? There's a, throughout this seven weeks, there's a theme that has been building up. And generally, there's different themes in the groups. My one group, they were all about the OTP. And that's why Bruno Smile attorneys came through and he, he delivered information to, to the group. Now, this particular group that I'm busy with right now, they're all about structures. Are we buying and, uh, uh, you know, in the right structures. So we're using the right structures like trust or, 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 or company accounts and things like that. So because I've picked that up quite early, I've already started conversations in my power team to see who's going to come through and give that information from a professional person's point of view that does this on a day-to-day -day basis that you ordinarily would have paid two and a half, three thousand rand for to see them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's all still part of the coaching program. And fortunately, I've got a lot of people in my power team. So I'm able to bring them in and they're able to share that information with you. Where you come loaded with your questions, you ask and you engage and you take it from there. So that's the first eight weeks. Yes, there's more. <laughs> so the eight week coaching program for me is there to build commitment build resistance, I mean, build um, uh, resilience and have structure. Because without structure, we can be all over the show when we, when we talk. Um, so this also goes with the one-on-one -on -one coaching. A lot of this happens in the one-on-one -on -one coaching. However, the difference is we see each other a lot more face-to-face. -face. You will get me two times in the field, <clears throat> two times in the field, and we will still go through this particular structure. Make no doubt about it. On a one-on-one -on -one 
you will go through this structure. You'll get more time with me on the field. You'll have a lot more time with me talking about your strategy, unpacking your strategy, me giving you direction around your strategy. You have a lot more one-on-one -on -one time with that. Why? Because you'll obviously pay a, whole, a lot more than what you will pay for group coaching. But the structure of group coaching is certainly there for one-on-one. -on -one. So ladies and gentlemen, the and more. When you are done with the eight-week program, I am not done with you. Why? I want to put your commitment to, to your success to the test. Eight weeks, we can say, oh, we've learned skill. We tried this. We've done that. We've, we've done all sorts of magical stuff, right? Now, there's a 90-day action plan. And no, you're not going to create it on your own. You're going to create it together with me. And here's how. We had a one and a half hour webinar unpacking all the artifacts that I send through. You get a book on how to, how to crush it. What goes into a 90 day action plan? What goes into creating your day to day tasks? What day to day tasks fit into a week to week, week to week into a month, into three months, and then ultimately into a year? but it's chunked down in 90 days. Because in 90 days, if you can change things around, you can use that same plan to do that repetitively over the rest of your life, over the rest of the year. And all I ask you in this 90 day action plan is to commit to what you're gonna do for the next year. Not the next five years, not the next 10 years. <clears throat> Wonderful with all those plans. Personally, I can see change in 90 days. Can you see change in 90 days? So you will get a book, it's 35 pages long, planting seeds in your mind on what you now need to look out for. What crushing methods are you gonna use to unpack the 90 day booklet that I've created? There's a 90 day workbook and a 90 day worksheet, 90 day challenge. So it's hashtag 90 day challenge. So if you've seen that hashtag on my uh, company profile, that's what it's about. And it's going to pop up a lot more in the weeks to come because we are now week one into the first 90-day program. Okay. Because I, so I keep loading things into the, the coaching program. Why? To keep you accountable for the journey that you decided to go on. But here is the crux of it. In five months, if you have done nothing, my question to you is, is your timing right? or is property for you, okay? And that's why I've done what I've done. Could I absolutely make crazy amounts of money from this? Trust me, I can. But my aim is not that. My aim is community. My milestone for this year, to the 30th of November, is to impact 100 students' lives. And if I can do that by means of group coaching, and so far, we've gone through quite a few people and they keep coming back and asking me, Jen, why, why do you have it this cheap? I don't understand. So I said, the point is, can we impact each other's lives in a practical way? All right. So in the 90-day action plan, here's it again, a one and a half hour webinar. I break down how to use all the artifacts and give you examples of what is expected on your daily tasks, your weekly tasks, your monthly tasks, okay? There's a small ebook. Then there's a 90-day challenge workbook, a 90-day challenge worksheet. You put that stuff together. What the guys are currently finding out is I've also got a mindset that I would not be a life coach if I didn't. I've got an, also a... a, 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 a um, um, mindset video series but that is then going to be spread over the next 10 weeks so last week they had one week to go through the artifacts and to really question themselves how would i be maneuvering life and this challenge what do i want from it what can i get from it what do i need from it how do i need to make sure i'm utilizing my time from today actually from yesterday then they would have started receiving that.
that video. And it talks about the monkey mind, how we can get, we can start using different methods and things like that just to get our mind focused. For 10 weeks, once a week, you'll get a video that is no more than four, five minutes. Or should I think it's the longest is five minutes. Okay. Just to plant in your mind again, what could I do differently this week? Maybe that technique didn't work last week. Or whatever the case is, you do with it what you need to do. That is the eight-week program paired up with the 90-day action plan. Guys, does this sound like something that would interest you? Tell me very, very quickly. <laughs> I like that. Yes, definitely yes. Okay, wonderful. I see a lot of yeses coming through. I see you. <laughs> wonderful stuff. Here is the picture of the May group. Because as many of you know, I, would, I first put this through as case studies. I didn't do any sort of Facebook marketing, da 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 And then only with my May group, my May group and my June group, when I knew that there is merit in what I'm doing, there is um, a lot more coming from what I'm doing, there is people are winning with what I'm doing. Like when I saw all the wins, that's when I went to market with it. So this is how small and intimate the groups are. For me, I keep them small and intimate for a reason. And here, if we've got two, four, six, seven, I'm included myself there. Six people came through this program. Six. Did I make millions from there? No. Did I change people's lives? That's the point. Okay. So I really trust and hope that you, that you guys certainly understand where I'm coming from with that, okay? And that is the end of us. What I want to say, if you are on a one-on-one, -on -one, it is 29,500 rand. And that's for a six-month program, encapsulating what you will do also in the group coaching, okay? It's a six month program, but one year support. The program, I want to make sure that you are committed to the goal. But if I've put something in front of you and we've shared and we've crafted your skill, in the next half year, my expectation is for you to call me when you need me. My expectation is for you to ask me for guidance when you need me. The first half of the year, I'm going to run after you. I'm going to chase after you if you're on a one-on-one. -on -one. My one-on-one -on -one students know that. But the second half of the year, you need to bring your A game. What does it look like for the discount people? The 75% discount group coaching. On a one-on-one -on -one basis, it's 8750 per person. If you're coming in with your business partner or with your life partner, then it's instead of paying 8750 times two, you just simply pay 990. Because my aim is still to keep group coaching under 10,000. Okay. So, like I said, I don't hammer on, on uh, this, but you know your pain, you know what you've been frustrated with. You know what has worked for you and you know what has not worked for you. There's retrenchments that are going on, all sorts of crazy things that are going on. We've paid our school fees. I paid 5 million school fees, but I paid just over 100,000 for two people to get property educated and coaching. That's what we did. <clears throat> and all of that, we still, I still took myself out of the game at one stage. And I still doubted myself and I worried. And then when I got back into the game, I came in full blast. And this is my way of giving back. The 75% group, the 75% discount on group coaching so that you don't pay the 29500 that you will pay on a one-on-one -on -one basis. How I got to these numbers, a professional told me, minimum, you should charge for 35000 However, 
<clears throat> if you're going to play a big game with the big boys, you should already start this program off on a minimum of 50,000. I said, I love you guys, but then you're not catering for what I need. And of course, I kept the eight, the 90 day challenge away from them. I didn't tell them about it. So that 35,000 is based only on the eight week program. And a lot of people have said to me, that still in itself is worth it. <clears throat> so my question to you is, are you worth it? I think you are. When are you starting? Our next group coaching starts Thursday, the day after tomorrow. There's also a small number of us. It may change because there's somebody that is flying. But if you are with us, if you are going to be part of the next group coaching, then I want to say that this is just up for a short period of time. Take advantage. Each month I change the specials. I keep it fresh. I keep it unpredictable. Okay. Uh, so at the end of the day, it is then up to you what you want to do. So as we reach the top of the hour, I want to say to you, thank you very much. I have enjoyed myself. I've loved the interaction. Feel free to contact me. Um, hook up with me on online. These are my handles. Imagine that sounded wrong, eh? Hook up with me online. <laughs> These are my handles. Um, I'm starting a lot more to use uh, Instagram these days, Twitter. So bear with me. I'm not that person on there, but Facebook, I shame. I'm very good on Facebook. <laughs> so nonetheless, I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. It's two hours that you could have been with your family. It's two hours that you could have been doing your own stuff. You've come back from a long day of work. But I want to say to you that um, this particular special will come to an end in the next 24 hours. So you then decide what is it that you are wanting to do. The end of uh, August specials may look differently, but July special for now looks like what I have shared with you. So just going back to that quickly again, the expert told me 35,000. I then decided on a one-on-one -on -one basis, 29,500, because you get a lot more time with me. You get a lot uh, more stuff going. And um, from a group coaching point of view, then uh, you'll come together with a few other people. Both of them are beneficial, not only just for your pocket, but it's beneficial that you leverage off of each other. If you are in a space where you're saying, you know what, one of my, one of my students called me the other day really going through the most right now. Now, they don't look at retrenchments the way they look at retrenchments now. Why? Because they've gone through my eight-week my, my eight program, and right now they're just focusing on deals, 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 even though Standard Bank has cut some of them loose. Um, I know a lot of you know Standard Bank and Hewlett and quite a few places um, are busy with retrenchments. My person said, Jen, I'm so glad that I found you. And I said, it's funny that you didn't find me when I was at Standard Bank, man. Because <laughs> it's somebody from Standard Bank and I'd never met him um, prior. And I, I, I consulted to Standard Bank for a very long time, as some of you may know. But nonetheless, I want to say again, ladies and gents, thank you for your time. Have a blessed one. Contact me. A lot of you already are on one, one, a one on one with me. Um, you would have seen with the webinar reminders, you've got my email address. Some of you could have asked questions even before we started. So, um, actually, all of you. But here we are. I want to say thank you for the love. Thank you for coming together on this Monday evening, sharing your valuable time with me. So, just before I I sign off. I want to ask for the last time, is there any questions? Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Oh, only a pleasure. Uh, I want to say thank you. Oh, thanks so much, guys. There's a lot more thank yous coming through. I really appreciate that. So I want to say to you at this given point, if there is no questions, I appreciate your time. It was a pleasure sharing from my experience, from my knowledge, from some of the crazy things that we've gone through. 
We will contact you in the next few days. I like that when the next few few days, I'll chat to you soon. You know, I've got you on speed dial. No, I'm just kidding. I've got the one that is just messaged me right now in the few few days. Um, um, I dropped you a message. I trust things are going good with your current stuff in property. So yes, guys, ladies and gentlemen, have a good evening and take good care. Ciao for now.